If you would like a free newsletter on this or other subjects, just give us a call at Christian Answers. The phone number is area code 512-218-8022. That's 512-218-8022. Or you could email us at cdebater at aol.com. That's cdebater at aol.com. Thank you. Greetings and welcome once again to our program. I'm Larry Wessels, Director of Christian Answers, and I want to thank you for joining us today. With me is my colleague in, at Christian Answers, our Director of Research, Steve Morrison. Great to have you here, Steve. Thank you, Larry. Uh, Steve is uh, the, the Director of Research for a reason. He does a lot of research, and uh, he has done extensive research into the subject of Islam, of which this is series show number eight. We've already done seven previous shows in a series on Islam asking the question, does the Muslim religion send someone to hell? We're trying to answer that question. Can believing the religion of Islam send you to hell? Of course, the word hell is a biblical term coming from the Bible. So Islam has borrowed that term from the Bible and incorporated it into the Quran. So Muslim viewers as well as Christian viewers accept the reality of hell. Now what we want to find out is, can believing Islam send you to this hell that's talked about, particularly in the Bible? In fact, Jesus talked more about heaven, I mean, more about hell than he ever did about heaven in the New Testament. Right. So that's something to consider. Okay, as I mentioned before, we've covered a lot of territory in this series on Islam. We've covered the origins of Islam. We've covered the Quran, the changes in the Quran. Uh, we've talked about the prophet Muhammad. We've talked about uh, manuscript evidence for the Old and New Testaments. We've, we've dealt with a, a lot of things in this series. And if you're interested, please contact our ministry to get your hands on this if you desire to get that information or contact the cable company and ask them to replay these shows on Access TV so you'll have a chance to see them because uh, we've covered a lot of material. We don't have time to go through it all now. What we're going to talk about now is something called the Gospel of Barnabas. But uh, we want to approach it in a different light. So the title of this show is called The Forgery of the Gospel of Barnabas. And Steve has done a lot of research on this. And it ties into the subject of Islam. Because Muslim apologists and, and Muslim uh, spokesmen in their attempts to attack Christianity and the validity of Christian doctrines will bring up the Gospel of Barnabas. Mm -hmm. And so this is an issue that we felt was pertinent to this whole series on Islam and, not, and needed to be dealt with. So, uh, brother, uh, go ahead and uh, talk about this outline we have on the screen right now Okay. Uh, in brief, and then we'll go into uh, more serious detail here. Well, we're going to give some background. Just most people haven't heard of it, and as you'll find out later, probably for good reason. <laughs> uh, well, and then we're going to see some contradictions between uh, the Gospel of Barnabas on one hand and the Bible and the Quran agreeing on the other hand. Then we'll see differences of the Gospel of Barnabas in the Bible, then differences with it and the Quran. Then we're going to see some general errors, some kind of silly things almost, and other historical anachronisms. And then we're going to try to uh, play sleuth or detective, so to speak, and try to find out uh, who probably wrote the Gospel of Barnabas. Okay. With that, we're going to start with the scripture verse, as you can see here, John 8, 24. It says, Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins, for if you do not believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. Now this is a very significant uh, verse, brother, and it will take a little bit of theological explanation for a lot of people to really understand what he's saying here. So go ahead and expound uh, on that a little all bit. All right, uh, Jesus is speaking here, and, and, he's, and he's telling the, the scribes and the Pharisees and the Jews in general that, that, that Jesus is the promised Messiah. Okay? If you do not believe that Jesus is who He claims to be, you will indeed die in your sins. 
Now, in the Quran, it does not. Say, they differ from Christianity. Muslims do not say that Jesus is the Son of God. Uh, they do not say he's a part of the Trinity. Uh, but in the Quran, it does say that Jesus is the Messiah, Messiah, you know, or or Christ in, in Greek. And so Muslims and, and Christians at least agree on that title. The Gospel of Barnabas says that Muhammad was the Messiah, not Jesus. Now, Muslims actually do not say that Muhammad was the Messiah. Okay, mm -hmm. but that's what the Gospel of Barnabas says. So you're saying right off the bat, the Gospel of Barnabas, which Muslim apologists bring up a lot, the Gospel of Barnabas says that Muhammad was the Messiah. Yes. And of course, they wouldn't believe that. No, it, the, the Quran says Jesus is the one who's the Messiah. Right. So uh, it, it's interesting they would bring up a book that they themselves don't even believe in. Right. But anyway, we'll get into all that. Okay. okay, now let's get into some basic background. Okay. Well, the Gospel of Barnabas, the first language, that the, the only copy that we really have, uh, the language it was written in was in Italian. Okay, and it was written um, sometime, we, we only know about after 1588, okay, which is, what, over 1500 years after Christ, okay. Also, we found other, um, quote, Gospels and similar things that were for, uh, forgeries done by Moors of Spain, and we know that they, that they were forgeries. So, it... If you're a Muslim, just imagine this. Imagine somebody runs to you and says, guess what? We found a new surah that's supposed to be in the Quran. Now, um, they would say, well, the earliest copy was in Arabic, you asked? No, it was actually uh, in Italian, uh, a, a language of the Middle Ages. They didn't even speak Italian in Jesus' time. They spoke Latin, for example. Um, or, uh, and, and imagine that there were things in this surah uh, or alleged new surah that contradicted both what was in the Bible and contradicted what was in the Quran. And imagine it contained some historical errors that were fairly easy to prove. If you were a Muslim, you'd probably have a hard time believing this surah. And if you can understand that, you can see why Christians have a hard time believing this ought to be in the Bible also. So it's sort of like, uh, let's say, this so-called new surah that was suddenly discovered, mm -hmm. and it should have been in the Quran, uh, and it said something like, well, Muhammad was a skydiver who loved to eat French fries at McDonald's. Right. That has a historical anachronism. <laughs> so there would be a real difficulty there. And that's what we're saying about Barnabas. There's some anachronisms right. that uh, simply don't match up historically to the, the text. And one other thing I'd like you to mention just briefly here, in our previous show in this installment series, show number seven on our Islam uh, subject, uh, we covered extensively manuscript evidence for the Old and New Testaments, we brought up the Dead Sea Scrolls, brought up early church fathers, brought up a lot of research material that anyone that's interested, you know, like I said, contact our ministry or the cable company and get a rebroadcast of that. Without going into all that detail, uh, mention the fact that here we've got all this manuscript evidence going way back in time for the Bible, the New mm -hmm. Testament scriptures, but there doesn't seem to be that, that same situation with the Gospel of Barnabas. There is absolutely none. There's no manuscript evidence. Uh, furthermore, you have all these early Christians, uh, and even all through the ages, quoting from various books of the Bible and, and everything, but you have no quotes from the Gospel, Gospel of Barnabas. Now, I should say that one particular Muslim writer uh, named Atu ur Rahman, uh, he mistakenly thought there was, because there is a totally different book. It's called the Epistle of Barnabas, or Letter of Barnabas, and that was an, uh, an early Christian letter uh, written by a Christian. And he actually has that confused with the Gospel of Barnabas. We have the Epistle of Barnabas in the, the early church writings prior to Nicaea, which you can see um, a, 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 over here. Um, it, yeah, you, know, we, 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 yeah, 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 you can read the letter of Barnabas, and you can also read the text of the Gospel of Barnabas, translated from Italian to English, and they're totally different books. All they have is Barnabas in the name. So he messed up on that, um, but other Muslims haven't. So. so Understanding that he made a mistake there, there, there is no evidence whatsoever in early history for the Gospel of Barnabas. So basically, the earliest you can find then is the date you, you gave, 1588. Yeah, That's around 1588. They it. don't know the exact so date. So we're, we're looking closer to 2,000 years from the original source. Yeah. Uh, and this, is being, this yeah. is being appealed to as some kind of valid document by a Muslim uh, spokesmen and, and debaters. Right. Okay, uh, let's go to uh, our chart here that the people at home can look at while you uh, talk about it. We've got contradicting both the Bible and the Quran. That would be the Gospel of Barnabas, contradicting both 
the Bible and the Quran. Can you uh, take us through this, Steve? Yes. Uh, first of all, I'll say that when you see page numbers, uh, the page numbers were a translation of the Gospel of Barnabas done by uh, uh, Lons uh, Lonsdale and Laura Rag. And uh, it's, it's from Bakhtiar Printers in Lahore, Pakistan. Print in Pakistan because Muslims are very in interested in this. So okay. um, that's from that. And uh, anyway, the first contradiction is the Gospel of Barnabas says Jesus is not the Messiah. In chapter 83, page 181, and chapter 97, 223, and chapter 42, 97. Now, Jesus is called the Messiah Christ in a number of places in the Quran. In Surahs 575, 517, two times, uh, Surahs 345, uh, 4, 157, and 150, 171, 172, and Surah 9, uh, verse 30. And now the Surahs aren't, aren't saying anything about Christ being Son of God or, or, or Trinity or anything like that, but they are using the word saying that he was the Messiah, you know, the, you know, the Jews, of course, expected the Messiah. Okay, so that's uh, the first problem. Now the second problem is that the uh, the Gospel of Arnold says the Messiah is Muhammad. Now, they, it gets worse. They say a lot more things about Muhammad that are never ascribed in any Islamic writings, but Messiah is Muhammad in chapter 97. Okay? And then it says also that a prophet's words were only to the people that they were sent to. Now, this contradicts Surah 4, 150 to 151, where it says you can't separate between the messengers and the prophets of God. You know, uh, one messenger of God uh, can't say, for an, an example, go left, and the others say, don't go left, go right. You, you know, but, but and, and the Quran says that, but the Gospel of Barnabas is trying to say, well, you know, you can forget about Jesus now completely and just follow Muhammad. Okay? It also says Ishmael was an ancestor of the Messiah, uh, which. If they think Muhammad was the answer to the Messiah, you can see why the Gospel of Barnabas would say that. But if Jesus was the Messiah and he was Jewish, then it was Isaac, not Ishmael. All right. Then it gets to things that aren't in uh, normal Muslim theology at all. It says that God created all things for the Messiah. Okay. Now, actually, in the Bible, in the book of Colossians, it does say all things were you know, created through Christ. By you know, him and it, for him. It, 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 but but, it, but in, in, the, in the Quran, you know, it doesn't say all things were created for Muhammad. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, uh, and, and, and specifically, it, it says in chapter 39, Muhammad is the one he's talking about, shall be my messenger, for whom I have created all things, who shall give light to the world when he shall come, whose soul was set in a celestial splendor 60,000 years before I made anything. So Muhammad's soul was set in splendor 60,000 years before the whole rest of creation, according to the Gospel of Barnabas. The Gospel of Barnabas, uh, talking about Muhammad, right. saying he's the Messiah and that all things are created for Muhammad. Right. Basically, it has to be if it's coming from the Gospel of Barnabas. <laughs> right. And, and then it says, the messenger of God, that is Muhammad, shall answer, O Lord, I remember that when thou didst create me, thou says that thou had will to make uh, for love of me the world in paradise and angels and men that they might glorify thee by me thy servant okay uh, chapter 55 page 131 also chapter 56 page 133 right and it says without faith in muhammad none will be saved okay muslims do not actually say that they believe that if a child dies in infancy in, in, in infancy um that that even though they didn't hear muhammad is possible for them you, you know to go to paradise and they believe that maybe somebody who tried to follow god and uh, didn't know about muhammad never rejected muhammad it's possible for them to go to paradise so muslims don't actually say that um and that reference uh, there was from the gospel of barnabas chapter 192 page 429 right so there are a bunch of differences uh, with the Gospel of Barnabas and the Bible and the Quran. Then there are some other differences with just the Bible. It said that Jesus was a voice in the wilderness in chapter 42, 97. Okay, well, from the Bible, who was the voice in the wilderness? <laughs> said, uh, uh, John the Baptist right. was a voice crying in the wilderness. So, it's in the Old Testament, New Testament, it's all over the place. Yeah, now, now the idea of, of a voice crying in the wilderness, I have not really seen that in the Quran. So I think we can see a pattern here. The writer of the Gospel of Barnabas is taking Christian thoughts and Christian theology, changing them a little bit, and then trying to jam them in to Muslim thoughts and theology, and coming into something that's really neither Muslim nor Christian. This almost sounds, in a, in a way, like a parallel with what Muhammad did himself with uh, the Bible. He's mm -hmm. got uh, Christian, Christian terms and theologies that he, he brings into the Quran and mixes it in with some of the uh, current cultural uh, religions and themes that were around in his day there in, in the, on the Saudi Arabian Peninsula mm -hmm. and 
comes up with a homogenized version of a religion. Right. It sounds like this is what's happening in the, Gar uh, the, the Gospel of Barnabas as well. Right. And, 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 and another thing, it, they, it claims the angels rolled the soldiers away for Jesus. Well, you know, the angels rolled the stone away. He kind of got that one mixed up a little bit. And then it said and that, that That's chapter 153. I mainly do okay, this for our right. audio soundtracks. Okay. Because some people won't be a, have a chance to see the video. Okay. But they, uh, they will listen to the tape. So that's chapter 153, page 355. All right. It said Muhammad was coming, which, you know, the Bible doesn't say that Muhammad's coming. It says Christ will come again. But that's it. Christ, you know, Christ is the fulfillment. That's right. That's chapter 44, page 105. Okay. And now there are some other differences that, you know, either the Bible doesn't speak about or they don't really kind contradict the Bible, but they do seem to contradict things in the Quran. For example, faithful Muslims who do not have works, they will be in hell for 70,000 years. Chapter 137, page 319. Right, and there's nothing I have read in the Bukhari Hadith that has that, that specifies that at all. Okay. Well, 70,000 years in hell. They don't have works. Well, so if uh, Muslims watching this series, and of course the title of our Muslim series here is can the Muslim religion send you to hell if you go with the gospel of Barnabas You're in danger if you don't have the good right kind of works right. to go to hell for 70,000 years Right, but yeah. then what happens after that is the question they, 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 <laughs> they, they, Then I guess they go to paradise after that and, and you know this sounds you know vaguely like they're almost trying to take the non-biblical Catholic doctrine of purgatory right. and trying to fit it into uh, an, an, a Muslim Right, it's mold, just so an homogenized, he's taking things from the, uh, the traditions of Christianity, like Roman Catholicism, for instance. Mm. And see, this makes sense that the Gospel of Barnabas couldn't have been around at the time of the early church because we're starting to see some things here that we know weren't around until much later. Yeah, well, we'll get into that a lot more in just a little bit. Okay, All right. very good. Uh, but in, anyway, it says that Muhammad will go to hell. Okay, I have I've read all the Hadith, I've read all the, <laughs> the Quran, I've also read all the Bible, and I've never read a Muslim source saying Muhammad is going to hell. It says okay. Muhammad will go to hell. hell, and he'll be terrified as he beholds the punishments of others. Okay, so he's I guess basically he's saying he'll go to hell to look at the punishment. Right, of others. That, visiting okay. hell, not staying. For a minute there, I was thinking, oh, Muhammad himself is yeah. going to go to hell. Yeah, no, kind of almost like visiting hell. It's chapter one thirty-five, page three fifteen. Right. It said that Mary gave birth to Jesus without pain. Okay. Uh, Chapter 3, page 9. Right. And, and Mary cried out, you know, and some medieval Catholics did think that about Mary. Uh, but, the, but the Quran, you know, says that, that, you know, when Mary was in pain, you know, giving birth to Jesus. And we believe that, you know, as far as we know, Mary had the typical pains of, of childbirth. Okay. Uh, it says it's unlawful to hate anything except sin. Okay. Well, at least in, in a lot of Muslim theology and a lot of the, the Hadiths, you know, you you curse Christians. Uh, you're supposed to to, to hate uh, all his enemies and, and hate lots of things. But but this is uh, almost like maybe not a Sunni Muslim thought, but maybe a, a thought of, of of some other Muslims. Now and now and, and, and as as Christians, we can you know we can accept this, but this is not really something that's a, an Islamic teaching. And uh, that's from chapter eighty six, page one ninety nine. Right, and they say God is a father. Okay, now, now chapter one thirty three, page three hundred seven. Okay, now Islam is generally very careful to say that God does not have any sons. And uh, of course, while the Quraysh said he had daughters, the uh, Islam says that Allah doesn't have any children. Period. Mm -hmm. All right. So they don't call God a father. Um, mm -hmm. But in the Gospel of Barnabas, you know, Christians frequently refer to God the Father. And so if you kind of take this Christian concept and, and 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 merge it in again, and and then it says that God is our Father, though He doesn't have sons. So it's kind of trying to combine them. Chapter 17, page 31 and 33. Right. And then it says there will be no envy in heaven. And, and that contradicts some of the things in the Bukhara Hadith about paradise. That's right. Chapter 177, page 401. Okay. All right. Now, these are some uh, mainly more doctrinal and theological contradictions. There are some serious contradictions that make us wonder if the writer really knew very much about the Mideast and about Palestine in general. Okay. Um, how do you sail to an inland city? In, in, uh, you know, if someone said, I'm going to sail on a ship to, let's say, the middle of Saudi Arabia. You would kind of question their knowledge of geography, or uh, they would argue, well, maybe there's a river that right. goes there. But 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 anyway, um, uh, it, it says in the Gospel of Barnabas that Jesus went to the Sea of Galilee, 
which is, is a small lake actually, and it does have a river coming out. And having embarked on a ship, he sailed to a city of Nazareth. Okay. Chapter 20, page 41. Right. Well, Na uh, Nazareth is inland. There is no river connecting the Sea of Galilee <laughs> and Nazareth. Now, you might want to, I don't know if you would, but if, 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 the, if the river were right and you had a strong enough modern ship and you wanted to try going up the Jordan River, which really isn't navigable, but if you want to try to do that, you might go to the Sea of Galilee and then you might get off the ship at the Sea of Galilee and go to Nazareth. But you wouldn't go to the Sea of Galilee to get on a ship. <laughs> and, 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 and your ship go to, to Nazareth, okay? And uh, that's chapter 20, page 41. And then it says that the Romans said that their idols were almighty, okay? Chapter 152, page 353. Right. And the Romans never said that. Uh, uh, the, the Romans, you know, they would accept even uh, struggles between the, 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 the different gods. They never said that they were almighty. Uh, it says that the Canaanites despised the Pharisees. Chapter 144, page 335. All right, well, there were very few Canaanites left in, 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 in Jesus' time. The Canaanites lived, uh, you know, during, uh, during the times of Joshua and the, con and the conquest and a little bit after. And there's nothing in anywhere that says of Canaanites despising any Pharisees. Right. Except being made up. <laughs> Which is what I think we're reading, made up stuff. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Uh, some other thing is the Pharisees in Jesus' time were very strange in their ascetic practices. Ascetic practices are like, you know, fasting all the time, denying yourself, uh, maybe you, you know, li living in terrible clothes. And, and that no contradicts house. everything we know from history. Yeah. And the biblical record themselves, and even what Jesus said about them. But that's chapter 145, page 337 through 339. Right. Uh, and then there are a bunch of just kind of general funny things said about the Pharisees. <laughs> I guess he made it up and thought, well, no one in Italy in the Middle Ages would know any better anyway. Chapter 143. Right. I won't worry about the page numbers. Okay. And then Rome, he said, had 28,000 gods. Well, they did have a large number of, of, of idol gods they worshipped, but not 28,000. <laughs> Chapter 152, right. page 353. <laughs> now, now, it said that the Roman Senate decreed that none should call Jesus God or Son of God. Or speak of Jesus. Well, in Jesus' time, right at Jesus' time, they did not even hear of Jesus. Yeah, that's chapter 98, page 227. Yeah, now, maybe, you know, sometime after, you know, you had Suetonius, Suetonius and Tacitus and Pliny the Younger when they were Christians, you know, 100 AD, 150 AD, yeah, different story. They did hear of Jesus, but that was not while Jesus was alive. Chapter 157, page 367 also. Okay. And, and, and the Roman Senate uh, didn't make a decree about that. And it said the people who preach, who preach penitence, penitence sounds like a good uh, medieval Roman Catholic word. That's right. They were called Nazarenes after Jesus. Okay, Jesus was not a Nazarene. Nazarenes were to never cut their hair uh, and to never uh, do certain things. John the Baptist was a Nazarene, actually, but Jesus was not. That's chapter 194, page 433. Okay. And the archangels, it said, were Michael, Raphael, and Uriel. And uh, the, there were considered four archangels in the Catholic Church in the Middle Ages. And that's pretty much pointing to exactly where this is coming from. And that's chapter 209, chapter 215, and chapter 220 for those angels there. All right. And, 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 and then when... There's some stuff there that's just kind of strange. Like they say that uh, God miraculously swapped, I guess, the bodies or whatever of Jesus, Judas, Judas and Jesus to where all the people thought they were crucifying Jesus, but it was really Judas. And when they mistook him for Jesus, uh, Judas just smiled. That's chapter 216, page 471. All right, and that Israel said that Jesus was God or the Son of God. Chapter 138, page 321. That... Uh, <laughs> that that's one, that one's hard to hard to believe. He right. Put it in there, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now uh, it it said that Barnabas was a disciple of Jesus. When the truth is, he was not a disciple of Jesus. Mm. All right. That's, he wasn't one of the twelve. That's chapter eighty three, uh, chapter eighty eight, chapter nineteen, and chapter seventy two. Okay. Also says there was a great famine in Israel in Jesus' time. Chapter one thirty eight, mm. page three twenty one. All right. Sometime after Jesus' time, and Paul. You know, we're, t we're talking maybe 20 years later, uh, there was a famine in that part of the world, but there wasn't a great famine just in Israel in Jesus' time. Okay, it said that God gave Jesus bad consequences, so God punished Jesus because others called Jesus God. Chapter 112 and page 257. Yeah, so. now, now, now I would be interested if any Muslim anywhere could find anything in Muslim teaching saying how God punished Jesus 
uh, because others worshipped him. I, from what I've seen, I don't think it's there in, in Islamic teaching. Right, right, because it's so alien to Islamic teaching anyway. Right. Because they don't, they don't hold him to be God in the flesh. Right. And just a just a prophet who talked as a baby, and you know his mother Mary shook a palm tree and some date, got some date, you know things like that. Right, right. And then it talks about the mountains of Samaria. Uh, Samaria you know, was on a mountain, but there weren't mountains plural. That's chapter eighty-one, page one eighty-nine. So, uh, so, so here, here are some of the funny things that there were errors. And just to kind of reiterate here is we're not saying that the Quran in, in, in this segment we're not saying that the Quran or uh, had these problems or that the Quran taught these things or that Muslim tradition taught these things. What we're doing is we're saying the Gospel of Barnabas teaches these things. And since these things are against the Bible and against the Quran. Why in the world do some Muslim apologists try to appeal to this book, the Gospel of Barnabas, just because it mentions Muhammad? Right, and also, what we're about to go into here, the historical anachronisms, prove beyond a shadow of doubt, it's a fraudulent book. <laughs> I mean, it's just a, uh, you know, if I, I could write something right now, uh, you know, some religion, I could just create, create my own religion, write it and stick it somewhere, and then maybe a two hundred a thousand years from now, someone will find it, and they may start a religion around it or believe it, but it would have to have something going for it. But I'm sure after a while, the way I talk, you can start to tell, oh, this guy probably lived in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he mentioned he mentioned the Longhorn football team somewhere in yeah, yeah. the uh, yeah. second. <laughs> That's right. And there would be things giving it away of what it, yet my religion that I wrote about. I'm trying to make it look like it's going further back than that or something but there'll be little things because of where I'm a time frame I find myself trapped in and I'm writing trying to make it look like it came from somewhere else mm. there's things that'll give me away to the public right. well what Steve is about to show you is things that give the gospel of Barnabas away and show that it's somebody else writing it trying to make it look like it, it goes somewhere else uh, it, it's fraudulent and like he was just saying why appeal to something that you know is is not true that anachronisms give it away showing that somebody just made it up uh, Muslims themselves wouldn't accept a lot of this stuff that's in there because of the doctrinal problems we already brought up with Islam mm -hmm. and so these these are in my opinion are a backbreaker to prove that it's a fraudulent book and it's not worthy to be even brought up in a in a serious religious debate right. as an apologetic weapon to attack the Bible or the Quran in this case. So go ahead, bro. Okay. So just get, give an example. And, and, and now our curiosity is aroused in the how or who wrote the Gospel of Barnabas. Well, one clue is it talks about coins in chapter 54. It says a golden denarius was divided into 60 minutiae. Okay, that was not true of coins in Bible times, but it was true of Spanish coins at that time. <laughs> In the Middle Ages, yeah, in the yeah, 1500s. Yeah, 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 and so there are some kind of like Spanish versus Italian theories that we'll get into. Okay, Abraham's father claimed there were an infinite number of gods. Well, the Sumerians did not have the concept of infinity. And that's chapter 26, page 57. Right. And then it said, uh, it, it, when it talked about when the forbidden fruit was going out Adam's throat, it got stuck. So he put his hand to his throat, and that's why every man, but not a woman, has an Adam. That's what's called a, a slang term, an Adam's apple. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Adam's apple was a medieval European phrase. They never thought that. Uh, they never called it Adam's apple, and they never, they never thought that in Bible And you times. don't have that in any church history before the middle, the middle, the medieval times. Right. And that's chapter 40, page 93. Okay, right. Now, Pilate was the governor. Uh, or, 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 Pilate uh, was not. It, well, he, was, he was a governor when Jesus was crucified, mm -hmm. but he wasn't the governor when Jesus was born. Ah yes, so he's the the Gospel of Barnabas is saying that that Pilate was the governor of Judea at the time Jesus was born, and we know scripturally, Herod was the king historically was even because they've even found some ar uh, uh, archaeological evidences to Pilate uh, it could not be true factually in time and history. Right, and uh, that. That reference right there can be found in chapter 3, page 7. Right. It says, Jesus was taught to fast, do alms, make prayer, and go on, pr and go on pilgrimage. And that's there chapter 89, page 207. Yeah, basically trying to make Jesus into a Muslim here. Yeah, because that's th those are part of the five pillars of Islam. Right. And uh, Islam, of course, we know, wasn't known 
before uh, 600 when Muhammad did, although they did do those things in the Khorish tribes, I right. believe, uh, which Pre predate, predate uh, Muhammad. But still, uh, you're getting something here that the Jews <laughs> particularly didn't, didn't participate in in, those, yeah. in, in that context. Yeah, they, the Jews didn't really have what they called pilgrimage. They did go to Jerusalem typically once a year, but, but that was a different thing. All right, so anyway, and now it talked about that the Jubilee was 100 years. Now, it was not... Uh, the Jubilee was a, t was a time of the Roman Catholic Church where they had special indulgences and they had just made it a hundred years right before we think the Gospel of Barnabas was written. Okay, so in the medieval times again, that's when the Jubilee was made a hundred years by the Catholic right. Church. And here there's a reference to it in chapter 83, page 191 through 193. Right. Now, now in the Old Testament, there is a, every once every seven years, you're supposed to let, let, let your lands lie fallow. And once every 49 years, there's a special jubilee. But that's 49. That's not 100. Right. Right. Okay. Now, I talked about the king's barons. Okay. That's pretty much a giveaway that we're talking about medieval times here. Chapter uh, 131, page 301. You desire horses like knights. <laughs> they have chapter, knights with armor in Jesus' chapter time. Chapter 69 and page 159. Now, these are the barons and knights. Uh -huh. I mean, how medieval can you get? Right. Uh, the burden <laughs> of the republic. Okay. Ch chapter 69, page 161. All right. You had courtiers and... and uh, chapter 133, page 307. That's medieval. And then <laughs> after the nightly prayer, which sounds uh, like an Islamic thing they try to say. Chapter 131, there. page 299. Okay. Talk about the pinnacle where the scribes used to preach. Chapter 127, chapter 129, and chapter 12. All right. The Jewish Pin scribes... Well, talk talk about there. the pinnacle. What, 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 well, that might be a combination of things. One of Jesus' um, temptations was Satan took him to the pinnacle of the temple and said, you know, throw yourself down because uh, God's angel will protect you. But then also in the Muslim minarets, you know, in the mosque, they, they, you know, they have somebody there who calls people to prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't actually preach from there, but it would cause people to prayer. Right. And um, the, the, the pinnacle where the scribes preached, the Jews just never did that. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the other thing is it, is it talked about, you know, in talking about the prodigal son, it talked about him having new hoes. Uh, and of course, they wore the men wore hose, you know, on the legs in, in the Middle Ages. <laughs> oh yeah, medieval hose that I've seen a lot right. of p paintings and uh, and etchings and things referred to. That's chapter one forty seven, page two forty one. Right now, two things here it says God is not composite, and man is composite. That's chapter one sixty one, page three seventy seven, and chapter one sixty eight, page three eighty nine. And yeah, what we're getting into here is more medieval philosophy that was not studied or thought about in, in earlier times and what it's saying is that if God is a simple being, if he is one way, that then he has to be all at one way because he's infinite, while man is a mixture of different things. Okay, well, um, I mean, while that's kind of neither here nor there, you don't really see that in the Quran or in the Bible and you don't really see that in philosoph philosophical thought, you know, in, uh, until the Middle Ages. Right. Okay, next one. All right, the other one it sounds like a medieval business relationship. Lazarus and his sisters were proprietors in the other towns of Magdala and Bethany. Uh, we, uh, we might talk about lot like a chain store of uh, 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 ends today. Proprietors, eh? Okay. And that Jesus, uh, or what looked like Jesus, but um, was really, you know, God switched to be Judas, um, was dressed as a juggler. When he was being crucified. <laughs> Chapter 217, page 479. Reminds me of a... Uh, a old Danny Kay movie I saw I think it was called The Court Jester mm -hmm. and uh, he did some, I think in that movie he did some juggling so he was a jester in a medieval court okay and uh, when I saw that I thought of Danny Kay in his his, his uh, clown outfit in mm -hmm. this medieval court you know as a court jester mm -hmm. and uh, this kind of just rings a bell with all this other medieval stuff we see popping up here okay so, so then it talks about pine cones which you don't you th you know you think of more in I guess Europe or heavily forested area. You don't think of in Jerusalem so much. Chapter one thirteen, page two fifty nine. Yeah, they they they, they did ha they do ha they did and do have trees in 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 Israel. You know, olive trees and things like that, but not like northern European trees. All right, they had fistula. Most people probably don't know what that is. That was an opening made in the body. Either a surgeon might make an opening in it for drainage, or it might just appear as, as a result of an injury or disease for you know pus and stuff to drain out. Uh, kind of medical practices like they did in the Middle Ages. Okay, so but it's not a medical practice that was wide known back at the beginning of time. Right. That's chapter 128 or chapter 120, page 275. And so that Jesus could not read 
uh, when he was 12 years old. Well, he was discussing scriptures uh, with the scribes when he was 12 years old, so Jesus in particular could read, but uh, many of the Jewish people, they really valued learning, and that they had schools for the kids, and so probably not just Jesus, but probably most educated Jewish kids could read at 12, not to mention most Greek and Roman kids. Yeah, so that's just a error in historical fact here, chapter 9, page 15. Yeah. Now, you can now, just go to the biblical records and see when he's in the temple, they're right. all amazed at his understanding and learning. Right. Now, now in the Middle Ages, many European peasants couldn't read, you know, when they're 12 and older. Mm -hmm. uh, doing penance is not it is a medieval christian concept it, it it's not that's really that's pretend. coming again from the roman catholic theology mm -hmm. and and so here you have this concept of penance tying back to that roman catholic doctrine right. mentioned in chapter 121 page 277 okay and once again giving away you know historical imperfection here <laughs> yeah and now if you're kind of wondering what's the purpose of the writer making up the Gospel of Aramis, I think we kind of see that in the next one. Jesus made prayer in union with the messenger of God and heard Muhammad's voice. <laughs> That's chapter 84, page 195. All right, so he heard Muhammad's voice before he was born. Well, I guess it could be a miracle, but, but you see how this is all kind of made up for the purpose of showing how Jesus prophesied Muhammad. And so you see why it might be a temptation for Muslim apologists to want to use this because it mentions Muhammad. Well, in a way, I see another pattern here, and it's like I've mentioned before. There's patterns in the cults, patterns in the false prophets, patterns in the false religions. And when, if, you, if you're coming from a, a perspective of a false religion, well, obviously, you've got a lot of, because it is false, there's going to be some problems to deal with. And what I've noticed in, in listening to Muslim apologists and, and, argue, and debaters that are defending Islam and trying to attack Christianity and things is that they, they basically pick and choose what they want. Now, that's a dead giveaway on a false religion. They've got to pick and choose what they want. They're stuck with the Bible because the Quran talks about the Bible and recognizes the Bible and says good things about the Bible. So they're stuck with that. So what they have to do then, because the Bible contradicts Islam so badly in, on so many key points, is they have to pick and choose what they want to use. And in debate, for instance, they'll, they'll take parts of the Bible that they want to accept and that tie in with some of their own beliefs, and they'll quote those like they're okay. Mm -hmm. But other passages of the Bible that don't agree with what Islam teaches, well, oh, that's no good, that's interpolated, that's a contradiction, it doesn't make any sense, so we don't accept it. Well, here, the reason the Gospel of Barnabas is so, uh, as Steve was just saying, a temptation to Muslim debaters and Muslim people in general is because there's places in there that they, it, it talks about Muhammad, and in this reference right here, out of chapter 84, page 191, Jesus made prayer in union uh, with the messenger of God and heard Muhammad's voice. Well, that's very, Muslims would like that. Right. They'd like that very much. And so they would pick that one. And this is one reason they use the Gospel of Barnabas. They pick out the things out of it that, that, that they find useful to them and uh, forget about the other stuff that would contradict the Quran or, or problems in it. They, you know, they just push that under the rug. Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying, what I've seen here is a pattern. A pattern in that wherever the Bible says something I don't agree with as a Muslim, well, forget it. Okay, I'm going to use this, in the same context, I'm going to use this Gospel of Barnabas, and it's going to say something in a few places that I like, so I'll use it. But in other places, let's forget it. Right. And so I'm just saying that, in my opinion, is, is, is not honest, and it's, and it's a symptom of of a false religion mm. because a false religion has to do things like that to justify itself because it can't stand on all the facts all the evidence give me the whole thing no we'll just pick and choose the parts that we like and forget the rest right. and I just wanted to bring that out because that just seems to be a typical pattern and one reason why Muslims go to the Gospel of Barnabas mm -hmm. they want to pick the things out of it that they want to use and, and, and cunningly ignore the things that or hopefully no one knows about right. the, 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 the other problems. Right. And that's just not honest, that's false, and it's reflective of a false religion. Anyway, All right. Go ahead. See, see, so, so one view, which I think we've eliminated, is we can't say that the Gospel of Barnabas was an authentic document that was reliably preserved. Okay. Now Muslims, they might 
want to say, well, maybe it was cor uh, cor uh, corruption of something, so the, maybe there were parts in it that were true, like maybe all the parts about Muhammad, and then maybe all the other things we brought up weren't true. So, but that's just idle speculation. It's like, how, why wouldn't you say that the other parts were true and the parts about Muhammad would, were the corruption? Because there's no mm -hmm. evidence one way or the other. Um, however, I don't say that the Gospel of Barnabas the Italian Gospel of Barnabas was a corruption of an early thing. I think the whole thing was made up. And when we try to find who make it up, who who, who made it up, we can look at, at some of the evidence. Are there are there some clues who wrote the Gospel of Barnabas? Uh, yes. For one thing, the Arabic notes in the margin might be a clue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, according to David Sox, the Arabic notes, they weren't written by an Orthodox Muslim because maybe by someone who just convert Islam and didn't know a bunch of stuff correctly or something and 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 because they had some problems in there and they say that the that the binding on the book was a kind of an unusual dark green oriental type and it was very similar to the binding of a Turkish document uh, in in uh, of 1575 in the Venetian archives and we think those were done in Constantinople uh, at least the binding part and of course uh, 1575 is after Constantinople fell, so you know, in 1453, so it was Muslim at that time. So we, we so if the binding is the same with this other book. It was probably that. Uh, uh, in addition, we know that uh, the Quran was translated into Italian in 1547, and you know, as we saw before, the the gospel, writer of the Gospel of Barnabas didn't know biblical history very well, nor Orthodox Muslim theology, but they knew the European medieval customs. They had those down pretty well. And if you look at the Italian it was written in, it wasn't quite standard Italian. It was, it's the sort of a Venetian dialect, but also sort of an influence of a Tuscan dialect from Tuscany too. And there are some Latin spellings of stuff, and even some influences, some stuff thrown from Dante. And in fact, uh, uh, that's a that's a very key point because you can look at, uh, let's say, the uh, the evolution of uh, the English language. Mm -hmm. You know, people talk a lot different today than they did 200 years ago. And you go back another 200 years ago, they talk right. even more. You take an old 1611 King James Bible, mm -hmm. and you open it up, and there's all this old-time language in there, and uh -huh. the these and the thous and all that, and, and it'll be using words like carriage. And uh, we, we see the word carriage in, in our day and age, we think, oh, that's that's uh, like a horse and buggy. That's mm -hmm. uh, you jump on it and you take a ride through the park or something like that. But in their day, carriage meant like a luggage, like mm. you know, a sack or a suitcase. Something or, to carry. Yeah, something to carry your stuff in. And uh, so the language has shifted and changed over time. Mm -hmm. And that happens with almost any language. Over time, things change. That's why right. I always have to come out with new new dictionaries and things. I add in the new slang terms that weren't around you know, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, in fact, I often think, you know, in new terms of vocabulary words, we think of the word internet. But let's say in the 1950s, if you walked on, you know, you, you jumped in that movie Back to the Future and took a time, you know, mm -hmm. took a DeLorean back to 1955, right. uh, jumped out there and said, hey, uh, I need a website for uh, the internet, you know, from some man on the street in 1955. They have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, what, we, what you're saying then is uh, the dead giveaways in this Italian version of the Gospel of Barnabas are there in the language themselves. Right. Itself. And, and, and Italian is the only language that the Gospel of Barnabas is written in, to our knowledge. Right. So, uh, so any any honest man looking at this kind of evidence uh, should be able to, to know you can't take the Gospel of Barnabas seriously. It's just not. <laughs> the evidence is too overwhelming. It contradicts the Bible. It contradicts the Quran. It it contradict, contradicts history. History, uh, the, the anachronisms in it give it away. Uh, there's no manuscript evidence for it dating past the Middle Ages, back to the early church, and yet Muslim apologists and spokesmen keep bringing this up. And as Steve mentioned before. Earlier in the program, he mentioned that the, the Gospel of Barnabas he's using was published in, what was it, Lahore, Pakistan, mm -hmm. which I believe is a Muslim country. Right. And so there's a reason why the Muslims are using this. But, as I said already, it's a dishonest use. If we already know there's enough evidence to disqualify it as a factual document, why use it at all? 
but yet we find the Muslims publishing it, distributing this thing around the globe, and then Muslim spokesmen using it. And I, I say once again, this is because the book is dishonest, yet it's being used by these people. That shows that they then are dishonest in using something that is easily proved to be a forgery, a fraud. What would you think of me if I come up to you and, and try to sell you something that's a fraud, it's not true? Oh, uh, here, uh, if, uh, if you sign this document, you give me uh, $200. This is a land deed for a certain part of the face of the moon. You can buy part of the moon today. And you've got a little map on here. It shows you what part of the moon you're buying. It'll give you at least 20 acres. And if you sign this and give me $200, you're home free, you know. I mean, it's it's just valid to do something like that. It's just dishonest. I can, and that's all I'm trying to show. And, and if a false religion has to use false stuff, I think that just proves the point. But a true religion doesn't have to resort to these kinds of things. Right. If it's the truth, you can use factual, truthful data to prove your case without having that go to fraudulent documents. That's a good yeah. point. Well, well, one question we haven't answered here is if the Gospel of Barnabas is not an ancient document but a medieval forgery, who wrote it? And we don't know for sure, but we have uh, three kind of suspects. So the people at home can see the chart, the suspects. Yep. Too bad uh, you don't have some mug shots of them, you know, with their faces and yeah. with the with the you know the height markers like behind police them thing, yeah. at the police station. Uh, well, uh, Fra Marino was the Father Inquisitor of Venice from 1542 to 1550. And perhaps he did this out of revenge. Uh, Felice Peretti, who was the future Pope Sixtus V, was a severe, devoted inquisitor of Venice who made many enemies. And in the 16th century, there were a number of trials for Protestantism and Anabaptism, and trials for blasphemous speech and sorcery. Uh, but uh, in the 1530s, Venice was criticized for being too tolerant. And there was an Augustinian friar who was punished for teaching her heresy at, of all places, the Church of St. Barnabas in Venice. And this is according to uh, David Sox. A handwriting analysis of Fra Marino's handwriting and the Gospel of Barnabas shows that they could have come from the same hand. Okay, oh, so, so looking at this, you'd say, well, then it's pretty much all settled. It's probably Fra, Fra Marino. On the other hand, though, there are, <laughs> there are a couple other things that look pretty... Um, More suspects. Yeah. Uh, another one is Ans Anselmo Tormeda who later converted to Islam and became Abdallah ibn Abd Allah. He was from Majorca, Spain. He studied in Bologna for 10 years. And in his biography, written 1383 to 1390, he claimed to be a priest before his conversion to Islam. His teacher at Bologna was a crypto-Muslim, that is a secret Muslim, uh, Dea Palza, and he says he was a converted Franciscan who took revenge on Christianity after his conversion to Islam. And since he was from Majorca, Spain, the fact that it mentions Spanish coins uh, kind of like lends support to this theory. Now, uh, other suspects is we found other gospel forgeries, um, and these were written by Moors in Arabic, and these are from Granada, Spain. The only thing negative against this theory is there weren't any of these known prior to 1588, and the Gospel of Barnabas, we think, was maybe a little earlier than that, maybe you know, 1575 or, or even earlier. Um, so, to kind of conclude, you know, if you're a Muslim and somebody gives you a book and says, hey, this ought to be a new surah in the Quran, you probably have a lot of questions. And if you ask these questions and if it didn't hold up, they contradicted the Quran, it contradicted history, it contradicted, you know, what, uh, uh, what we know of the geography, and, and it, it wasn't even a very good forgery, you'd probably just laugh it off or you'd probably say, no, this doesn't belong here. Well, Christians say the same thing, and so we're somewhat baffled why Muslim apologists uh, point, often point to the Gospel of Barnabas and, and say, well, it maybe is predominantly true, and, 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 and just because it has Muhammad's name in it and may have been written by a Muslim, uh, you know, in, in, in actual fact, and they like to point to that, and that's one of the arguments they have to use to try to prove that, you know, it, it, that, that Islam is correct. Okay. Now, I think uh, we've given sufficient a evidence and data to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt the gospel of Barnabas is a joke okay <laughs> it's just not true and anyone that would stoop to using a fraudulent document like this to substantiate something uh, has to actually if we know the evidence on it has to actually be invalidating their own position by using it to prove something because uh, you don't use fraudulent and fake material 
to try to get to the truth of any matter. And uh, to me, it's, it's very revealing when someone uses uh, a document like this. Uh, it's very revealing to show that they simply are, are using dishonest methods to make a point or an argument to deceive people. So don't be deceived by this particular thing. And uh, as you know, as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, this is show number uh, eight, I believe it is already. I'm yep. starting to lose count here. <laughs> show number eight in this Islam series. And the title of our overall series is, Can Believing the Muslim Religion Send Someone to Hell? And as I said before, hell is a biblical term that Muhammad, years later, lifted from the, the context of the Bible and put into the Quran. And uh, so when you have the Quran mentioning hell, it was simply borrowed from the, the writings before it, which were the uh, Old and New Testaments. Well, Steve, what we want to go to now with our time remaining is answering that question for our viewers and maybe highlight a little bit of the different things we've talked about throughout all these shows in the series. Uh, can believing the Muslim religion send someone to hell? We've already established the fact that it's not Christians using the Gospel of Barnabas to prove the truth and validity of Christianity. Right. It's the Muslims using a fraudulent document to try to substantiate their position and attack Christianity, mm. uh, which to me undercuts their own position, actually, and shows but, that they're the ones using falsehoods. Uh, but don't just uh, settle for what I'm asking you on that. Kind of tie in all of the different things we've talked about in Islam in the series and tie it into the question, can the Muslim religion send you to hell? Okay, it's uh, basically if you look at the evidence, you say, well, is the Quran uh, uh, compatible with the Bible as it has been preserved? No, it is not. Does the Quran have uh, internal contradictions? Yes, it does. Does the Quran have, have external problems? Yes, it does. So the Quran is not from God. For the majority of Muslims who hold to the Bukhari Hadith, um, then what do the Bukhari Hadith say? They have a lot of things that are fairly ridiculous also. Um, and so that can't be from God. Uh, who well, they said, what do they, what did the Hadith say about Muhammad? He could be bewitched by the devil. Right. Which, which I'm not sure that's so ridiculous. That one's not so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> But 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 uh, 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 using uh, using the stars are, are to throw to throw at devils. Uh, we haven't seen any stars move. What about fly medicine? That's right. Uh, it, 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 if a fly drops in liquid, you need to put the uh, uh, put it back in because the other wing, you know, one wing may have the poison, but the other has. That's an right out of the hadith. Right. Uh, and and so, like I said before on our other show, I'm wondering why the pharmacies, like at our grocery stores. Mm. Or, or Walgreens or something. They don't have just a whole bunch of fly cages. Right. And they just uh, make all their medicine using the fly wings. Just make sure they pull a right right wing. Right. <laughs> okay, what do you, you know, a guy comes up to the counter, says, well, I'm sick, I need some medicine. Okay, well, hold on. Let me get you, get this glass of water here. Uh, and they should have each each wing diagnosed as which one has the antidote and which one has the disease. Okay, right. well, this, way, this side has the disease, so I better pull this one. This has got the antidote. Drop it in the, the water and have the guy drink it right there. That would be $15, please. Yeah. Uh, but, but the problem is uh, things like that, and to me what's really devastating is that Muhammad himself could be uh, giving something that's supposed to be from Allah but really, it's the devil telling them things. Right. I want to make it's sure we got that in because that's stuff we went in detail in previous shows. Uh, so anyway, keep going with what you're okay. doing. I just I was so, jumping so, in. From so some so of this. with with all of these things, it's like, well, who was this Allah? Well, Allah was the kind of national or tribal god of the Quraysh, and Allah had three daughters, and Muhammad seemed to take a lot of practices in common with the Quraysh and the use of Allah, and he cut off some stuff. He said Allah didn't have daughters, at least after the satanic verses. And he combined it uh, with he it, with uh, Khadijah took him to have someone read the gospel to him and, and, and he knew of the Torahs. He apparently knew of some apocryphal literature. And it all kind of came together. Uh, and then it spread by the, the, by the predominantly by the sword. Um, Leave uh, Islam or die. Yeah. Uh, both at Mecca and then it spread out through Syria and it continues to spread by the sword today. It's a very violent and warlike type of religion. Yeah, they claim to be the religion of peace, but it's a, but it's a very sad thing uh, for, for, for the Muslims um, that are killing many Christians now in, in Indonesia uh, and, and, and in the Sudan. And you know, one thing about that, I've never been able, I've almost never seen a Muslim 
been able to say anything about that. I tried to get this one Muslim guy I was corresponding with to say that killing people in cold blood for the sake of Islam was wrong, but he never would say that. And I did only find one answer about Islam and human rights by a Muslim, and basically he said, well, everything comes from God, and uh, Allah, all rights come from Allah, and, and if Allah didn't give you the right to live, if you know, you're not a Muslim or Christian or Jew, so therefore there is no human rights issue. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, for all these reasons, so if you want to look into all the details like we did, if you want to look at the overall tone and message of Muhammad, and you want to look at the practice of the majority of Muslims today, I'm not talking to small numbers of extreme sects or cults, I'm talking about the majorities. Mm -hmm. um, then for all of these reasons, you, you know, you, you have all these things that lead to the same answer, that Islam is not the same religion as Christianity, and when they reject Jesus, then uh, Islam will send people to hell. So believing Islam can send you to hell, of course, according to the, to, to the Hadiths, uh, according to Muhammad, most of the people in hell, the majority of them are women because right. of their deficient in their mind. And they're ungrateful. Well, and they're, they, it, it, they, it's they because they're ungrateful to their uh, uh, husbands. Oh, that's right. I confused the hadiths because the deficient in mind came because they only have half the witness of a man in a court of law or something like that. Right. It, Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of them were in the hell ungrateful to their husbands, and a different hadith says um, that they have half a witness because of the deficiency of their minds. Okay, I just got the two uh, Muhammad uh, teachings about women confused there about the hell and, mm -hmm. and deficiency in mind. But uh, anyway, the, the problem is if you're a if you're a woman, watch out. You know, Muhammad says the majority of women in, or the majority of people in hell are women. But anyway, we, we're running out of time, brother. Uh, we've talked all this stuff about Islam. Spend a minute or so telling us the virtue of Christianity and the Lord Jesus Christ in contrast to Muhammad and Islam. Okay. Well, first of all, in agreement with Islam, there is only one God who is a creator of, of everything, and while there are lots of little idol gods, those are all false gods, okay? But in contrast to Islam, God being almighty can do anything he wants to do. If he wanted to appear on the earth, he has the power to do so. If he wanted to appear on the earth as a human being, he has the power to do so. If he wanted to appear uh, and, and, and be incarnated in, in human form, he can do so. When Jesus was on earth, heaven was not empty though. It's not like you know, all the universe just fell crashing down because Jesus was there. No, uh, God is able, was able to be in heaven and at the same time he was a, he is able to be in Jesus on earth. And, uh, and God's message to us is that all of us have fallen short of God and whatever set of rules we have tried to follow, be it the rules of the Bible and the Old Testament, be it rules of Islam, be it rules of some other religion, even if you're following the wrong rules or the right rules, whatever is right, uh, no one has succeeded in being perfect and following all the rules. All of us, Jesus accepted, need forgiveness for our sins. Jesus provided the way for us to do that. God is not an arbitrary God who can punish some sin severely and just wink at other sin. Uh, God is a just God who, who has to be just and punish all sin equally. And so if God's going to punish all sin equally and yet he wants us to go to heaven, uh, then Jesus Christ came and he took the punishment for our sin. The sacrifice of, of the lamb and, and, and sacrificing was something that the Jews practiced for almost 1400 years and when Jesus came uh, he paid the penalty for our sins and it's by accepting his free gift and free offer and accepting him as our Savior and as our Lord that we can have eternal life. Right, and go to heaven and not hell. Right. Well thank you brother for that. Uh, we're out of time. This is Larry Wessels with Steve Morrison of Christian Answers. Steve being our director of research for Christian Answers. If uh, you have any further questions please call or write us. The numbers and address come at the end of the show. You can get a free issue of our Christian Answers newsletter resource list. We have plenty of tracks and other information on Islam and other subjects. Feel free to call us. Thanks for being with us. Remember, Jesus Christ is the answer. Jesus is the Lord of Lord and King of Kings, not Muhammad. And Amen. trust the Bible because the evidence is there for the Bible. And the evidence is not there for the Quran. Check it out for yourself. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Join us next time. Muslim friend, please do not make this eternal mistake, but believe what Jesus said and not what Muhammad said for Islam is a religion of unbelief and of making an idol of Muhammad a man who denied what Christ said.
check out our websites, BibleQuery.org. This site answers 7,700 Bible questions. HistoryCart.com. This site reveals early church history and doctrine proving Roman Catholicism is not historically or doctrinally viable. MuslimHope.com. This site is a classic refutation of Islam, a counterfeit religion created by Muhammad. Free newsletters are also available. 